it is better to look stupid before God than to look like the smartest person and then miss God and miss his purpose for your life. In the Lord's Prayer, there is a part of it that says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the posture of saying, God has me where he wants me because I want God's will. God will not override your choices. You have to make the choice. Hi, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am OM. In today's video, I want to talk about when God has you where he wants you. Two things will happen when God has you where he wants you. The reality is that where God wants each of us is not a location. Neither is it a social status, but it is a posture. A posture whereby God's will can be done in our lives. And the first thing is, when God has you where he wants you, you have the posture of saying, let your will be done. You know about the story of Jesus when he was going to the cross and he had his desires and he told the father, I wish that this cup would pass by, but not as I will, your will be done. In my life, I realized that when I tell God, let your will be done, it's like I'm telling God, you can force my hands, which means it will take the sovereignty of God, most times being a human and being honest, for God's will to be done. Because I don't really want it. I have desires and I would really like my desires to be done. But then I will tell God, let your will be done. And looking at it from my perspective, it kind of looks like it is more of being passive god let your will be done which means i can go into a relationship and tell god let your will be done but for god's will to be done there is a participation that i need to do to bring god's will to pass which means i need to come to a place of allowing god's will to be done because sometimes it feels like we only do this to satisfy our emotions like i can speak for myself just to tell god let your will be done so that it wouldn't look like you did not pray that prayer. But then you still go ahead and do things following what you want. Expecting God to force you to his way, to his will. Sometimes God will not force your hands to do things because he gave you the power of choice. And in his sovereignty, he will allow you to do your part. Which means, like I talked about relationship, for those who might go into a relationship, God won't force your hands to do things that you don't want to do. God won't force you to leave someone you do not want to leave. God won't force you to make an application you do not want to do. God will present you with all the opportunities that you need, people to talk to you, people to inspire you, because that is him making his will, presenting his will to you. But then you have to be a participant in getting God's will to be done in your own life, which is why in the Lord's Prayer, there is a part of it that says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now I saw the scripture in Psalms 32, which really blessed my heart. Scripture says, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. This part is what really struck me. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you where you've not been before. Don't make me talk you and pull you along. Just come with me. This is the path of saying, when you say to God, let your will be done, that is the posture of saying, God has me where he wants me because I want God's will. I won't allow God to almost like get to a place of God forcing me. God force my hands. God override my choices. God override my decisions. No. There are some Things that God will not override your decisions. God will not override your choices. You have to make the choice, which is why scripture says, don't be like a horse that has to be brittled and you have to use rope before you can direct it. You have to whip it before you can direct it. God says, don't let me talk you in. Don't let me pull you along. Just come. Let it be a willing thing. And this is the second part of that that I discovered as I was studying the book of Joshua. When God asks you where he wants you, you'll be at a place of saying, God, I am at your command. The first part is let your will be done. You are preparing your heart for God's will to be done. The second part is like saying, I am here to do your will. Just tell me what to do and I'm ready to do it. Because sometimes we tell God, let your will be done and we are not ready to do what God wants us to do that is in line with his will. We are not willing to do it. We want 
God to almost like force our hands, override our choices, like I said earlier. And we are not horses. We are not donkeys that has to be forced. We are humans that God gave choice made in the image of God and God will not force us. That is why sometimes when people talk about the Garden of Eden, why did God not stop Adam from sinning? Yeah, God in his sovereignty would have, but he did not because that would be him violating the free choice he gave to man for man to be like him so god would not violate his own law that he kept if adam would have been in a place oh lord let your will be done and god has already told you given you a clear command the tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat of this fruit if adam would just be in a place of god let your will be done and never come to a place of making up his mind to do the will of god to obey the will of God and the commands of God, how then would God's will be done? It's just like being in your life and you're telling God, let your will be done. Are you obeying the instructions he is giving you? As a single person, if he's telling you, do not engage in sexual immorality, do not engage in premarital sex, are you going to give excuses and follow the culture? As a married person, oh, are you going to give excuses that, oh, your wife was not around, your husband was not around, or you just could not control yourself what excuses are you going to give because scripture is clear on these things and there are so many other things maybe in your career path and in your life choices that you could make that are not in line with god's will that has been laid out so when you tell god first let your will be done secondly you have to come to a place of saying i am at your command in what other way would god's will be done in your life and in my life if i am not a willing participant if i am not willing to allow God have me where he wants me, then God's will will not be done in my life. This story in the book of Joshua chapter 5 is very, very important and crucial for me to bring this point home. Verse 13, when Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied, I am the commander of the Lord's army at this joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence before i continue i'm just fascinated with the fact that the lord did not care to want to go into a deep detailed conversation with joshua he said are you friend or foe he said neither he mentioned who he is i am the commander of the lord's army like i'm just considering the fact that joshua did not go to ask him who are you but he said are you friend or foe tell me where you stand not who you are and i love it because the lord is like it's not about where i stand it's about who i am joshua is asking where do you stand are you standing for me or you're standing for my enemy he says i'm not standing for either of you i am for me this is who i am i'm the commander of the lord's army what was joshua's response fall to the ground in reverence in worship and this word he said i am at your command joshua said what do you want your servants to do this is where god wants us to be god has you where he wants you to be when you are come to a place of saying lord i am at your command what do you want me to do today how do you want me to think because that's why i read the bible that's why i study my bible that's why i listen to sermons to scriptures because god is communicating his will to me and i am with the heart posture that i am at his command his wish my command whatever he says i want to do it i want to follow through and this was joshua's posture and this is what struck me had it been joshua did not get to this place of saying to god i am at your command what do you want me to do it would come to a point that when god would tell him what to do in conquering jericho in the next chapter joshua would not be able to do it because it doesn't make sense and that's one of the most important part that we need to note that sometimes when we follow God by faith and we want to do the will of God and we are telling God, I am at your command, the next thing he might say to us may not make sense, which means we should be in a worship posture knowing that I am reverencing you, God. I know I can trust you. I know I can trust your heart. I know you have my best interest at heart. Whatever is your will for me, I'm going to follow. It may not align with my emotions. It may not feel good. It may not sound good. It may not sound like it's really sensible because it doesn't make sense to me. But whether I understand it or not, I am at your command. In Joshua chapter 6, in my closing, Joshua was told by God to just walk around Jericho. The walls of Jericho. You know about the story of the wall of Jericho falling down. You can read the story in Joshua chapter 6. It doesn't make sense telling fighting men 
to walk around the world six days once per day and on the seventh day they should walk around it seven times and they'd blow the trumpet i'm like does this even make sense because i was wondering what would the people do because they were working with the people wouldn't they complain and be like ha, which one is this one now why is god why is god trying to make a fool of us like let's just be real that's the reality and just why if you read that chapter six just what i was saying to them no one should say a word as we are walking down here everyone was so silent no one said a single word till they walk those six days and then the six times on the seventh day on the seventh time that's when they shouted that doesn't make sense but then god had already prepared joshua to say i am at your command whatever you want me to do i'm going to do it and when god had him where he wanted him to be god then told him what to do because now he's ready to do the will of god and i believe as I was studying through this scripture, that that is the posture God wants us to come to. It is beyond you saying, God, let your will be done. To come into a place of saying, God, I am here to do your will. Like Christ said, I am here in the volume of the book that was written about me to do your will. Which is, it's now as elevated from the place of, God, I want your will to be done, force my hands, to saying, God, you don't even need to force my hands. I am willing to obey you. I'm willing to look stupid for you because it is better to look stupid before God than to look like the smartest person and then miss God and miss his purpose for your life. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I believe and I hope that this video will inspire you to tell God, I am at your command. What do you want your servant to do? You are in charge. You are my God. You are my commander. I look up to you. You are the director. I look up to you. I'm willing to obey. Your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. Thank you so much for watching today's video and check out the next video. Subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe and hit the like button. Share this video with your friend.